Hello there everybody and welcome back to episode 2 of my tutorial series for Against the Storm in the Viceroy difficulty. So we're today facing a interesting situation in the first episode we cracked open a big glade. We also managed to pick up a lot of people. We have now, after starting relatively slow, the case of five homeless people and the hearth here ain't done yet. So there's a lot of things to do in this situation, and the first thing that we're uh, ideally doing is get that hearth going. And after that, we should bring up some houses to get our population happy. So for this particular situation, I'm going to go for a uh, quick fix. Since there is the storm season around the corner in one minute, I find it really a pressing matter to get that done. ASAP. So we will. Housing does make people happier and therefore I find it always a top-notch priority as it is a really cheap way of making people happy. So there goes our year two storm season and the happiness of the lizard ain't high. So let's see how this will play out. This is now the first storm that actually is capable of killing people and getting us into trouble. So Another thing I'm noticing, we totally should stop these fools from wasting more resources here. So we're unemploying that. We're, we're keeping the uh, production here running, but we got a brickyard now. It is really no longer the time to waste our precious materials on that. So we employ somebody here up until a limit of 30 bricks. We don't really need an endless supply of these. And that guy will keep working until his uh, next batch is done, and then we cancel that out. I don't want to cancel the production right there, as we are currently really in desperate need of bricks, so... It is quite necessary, but... There we go. The more processes you uh, manage in the background, the mightier your colony will grow, and this game has a lot of room for improvement in that regard. So, storm comes crashing down. Hostility 2 means that we are going to suffer quite a lot here. So, the first thing we do is we're going to kick out the woodcutters. You also can go for this button here to just kick them all out. And as you see here, this lowers the hostility already enough to go back to neutral. This is where we want to be. This is really, really good. So, in higher difficulty levels, the storm season is a season where you can build relatively good, as there's just so much personnel available due to the fact that the woodcutters aren't woodcutting right now. We can get other things done. But one thing I really love to do, as you see here, this dude here is kicking the threshold up uh, too much. We still can employ one woodcutter, and we will employ one woodcutter. It is really, for me, always important to get the most out of my current hostility level, because it's literally the same impact if that bar is full or empty. You just gotta not hit the next level. So that's just a personal uh, preference of mine. So I want to get another plantation up and running here. And as you see there, this is, uh, well, we're going to put it down here. I think this is uh, a necessary evil, sort of. But I think this is better than it looks. And here we go. So down here, we have the escaped convicts event being completed. And let's see, that brick is also done. So we're forcing delivery now, so the hearth up there can be built. So in the very first years, it is all about getting your production up and running. So currently our next big drama is the food production. We are currently harvesting quite decently here. Down there, the herbalist's camp cranks out quite a decent amount of food. And obviously we're, uh, I don't know, do we? Nah, we are. Ah, here we got our first uh, berry plantation already. So what we are requiring now is an income source of fabric because we're still relying on the uh, on the lowest tier here. So I really want you to stop what you're doing here, my good lizard friend. Let's do this. 
So where were we? Yeah, fabric production, and after that, complex food production. In the higher difficulty levels, I personally deem complex food production as one of the most important things that is out there. So, second hearth is being erected. So that's the moment where your fuel consumption goes up. But it also helps you in so far as all your workers now up here have a shorter way to go to their breaks. That's one thing that is easily underestimated that everybody working up here had before had to walk from, let's say these dudes here, had to walk all the way down here to take a break. So that's that, that's really, really a big, big difference. So hearths should always litter the path of your main production centers. This way you can make your cities much, much more effective. All right. Let's force the construction of that plantation because it is really important, but luckily it's already running. Brilliant. So. Well, let's see. Our raw material count says... We got no plant fiber whatsoever so i think the very first thing that we're doing is that this plantation here will keep the mixed spread so we get both materials so currently we got seven workers left we will have to put a lot of these workers back to business into the woodcutters camp in the next year but all in all we got a quite decent amount of extra workers here available to work with i'm left shift uh clicking at uh, tapping here on the small warehouse because I want to bring another one down here so my farmers can be more effective. So work safety guide. Education is increasing production time. That is really, really nice. And food production speed is increased for drizzle water stored. Now that is very easy to uh, fulfill. So we're going to work with that. I really like that. So the thing here is every rain collector that you build does provide 50 points of storage or 50 units of storage for each rainwater color. So technically we already got ourselves a 15% increase once that thing is up and running. And it'll only cost us workers once. It's really good. So next package of people. So this is five people. This is four people. This also brings building materials. So right now I got so freaking many workers that I really am starting to scale back in my uh, in my in my population intake. So let's put up more woodcutters here. There we go. That brings the hostility up to level three. So there's uh, quite a lot of hostility to go around now. Now then. Next question we always got to ask ourselves, where do we want to expand next? So checking out if we can build another hearth here. No, we can't. This is just uh, way too close. So we're going to expand our way to down here, I'd say. That sounds to me like a perfectly reasonable choice. So we're going to claim, ideally, I think that glade here as well. I mean, we still have a job to open up glades don't we so a new pack is open here or openable loyalty decisions versus ah yeah i remember remember that one now so well like i said the other time there's still time to uh, to wait for with that selection so we do all right i'm also building up decorations now up here and we're going to get that hearth level up as quick as we can. So to get anything done now, we do require new drafts. We are at the point where the city is actually running quite decently. But there is nothing else I can expand into. We got the brickyard already. I don't have a provisioner yet, so let's change that. But beyond that, we are pretty pretty much at a point where, where stuff is running really decently on its own. So it's time to expand. That is, in my opinion, always the best moment to uh, to go for your expansion. All right. So we're going to pick up the restoration bonus. Brings us a bit of reputation. 
And let's see. So Skewers, Biscuits, and Pigment. Oh, well. Skewers is... Let's see. Not a uh, food source that we can work with. Biscuits. Well, we are, we are harvesting berry. We are not harvesting anything that we can transform into flour. Sadly. Brewery. Yields pickled goods. Pickled goods. That's something we can do. All right. So that is a uh, pretty uh, attractive, sort of, as it also offers a pretty decent source of packs of crops. So we also need provision packs. I'm not quite fond of that decision yet. So ale is also a thing that we could go for, but we are lacking raw materials left and right for these. So for for now, I'll be I'll be not deciding. That sadly didn't really help us out. So we're going to go and uh, turn in the problem solver um, reward here as well. And, well, I'm going to go for the brewery here. Because I see a, uh, a, a use in that. And we're going to pick up the... Wow. We could pick up a tavern right after that. So I'll be delaying my decision now another time, because technically the Weaver is what we need to get our fabric production going, but practically we got a production of ale, and that uh, passive here is also very, very powerful. So let's see if we can magic something up. In the meantime, I'll be ordering my woodcutters to cut open that blade, and we're going to cut open the other blade here as well. Because I think it is time that we're uh, trying to expand ourselves a little bit more. Alright. So, let's put people on our buildings. We got so many workers, let's make them work. Over here at the lumber mill, we can beaver it up too. We can have our road run like that. The good point right now about our city is that we got a really decent amount of food income. Due to the double plantation, we're really well off. The thing here to respect is that the tavern pick is a greedy pick. We don't know where we should get our grains from that we require to brew into beer. So that is a big problem for, for us at that point. But right now, the decision-making of mine goes as follows. If we happen to find now good stuff here on these two glades, enough to just keep us running with the raw food and some sort of stuff that we can brew into beer, I'm sold. Speaking about sold, we should definitely also finally bring up a trading post. The trading post, by the way, is one of the most useless buildings in terms of practicality, that is uh, known to to the game. What I'm trying to say with that is you don't need to have um, that thing placed somewhere efficient as it's really only a thing that you click on process your traders. The trade goods don't even need to be transported away from there into the warehouse or something like that. No, no. So you have total freedom where you place that down, and by all means, don't place it down anywhere where it's an important spot for your infrastructure. Just uh, personal experiences of mine. Okay, as you see here, our city is uh, really rising up, and we have opened up another dangerous glade. So we found drizzlewing nests, so we have a steady supply of eggs and meat. We got a large supply of these buggers, but we cannot pick them. And we found a cellar. So, at the cellar, we can make pickled goods. So, that uh, makes me instantaneously regret my draft from the previous time. So, you see, it's so easy to make a mistake there. It could make wine, and it could make jerky, but not at a really, really good rate. So, this building, well... I personally rebuilt most of them, 
because you never know what you'll be drafting in the meantime, and sometimes they are just that good. So calming the spirits would require us beer that we got, and we'd be gaining Queen's Grace out of that. So ah, we sadly don't have the money for this. Tearing it down will provide us global resolve penalty for all the uh, amber in our position. So tell you how we're going to do this. Since we've just built the first trade post in the game, a year uh, after starting the game, the first trader immediately arrives. Mm -hmm. So the easiest thing we can do now is we can try if we can get 15 ember together. And if yes, we're going to use the calm spirits thing. It's actually a zero sum game. But if not, we're going to tear it down and be happy about the building materials. Hello. So we can sell away one of these ancient tablets. That's already a big portion of the money that we require. I already got a big selection of crop packs. Where did these come from, I wonder? Ah, well. We can sell copper ore, as it's uh, really hard in my, in my current situation to process that properly. So, yeah, we can buy ourselves 15 amber. But as you see here, pure amber is more costly than it is the other way around. But it is okay for me. We're just going to sell away a few more extra crop packs and let's say a couple of berries, only a few. There we go. I prefer the uh, second reward for this event as it gives me reputation. You, you see, th this is just uh, a, a, a nice way of, uh, of starting to win the game while we can. And that's why I'm trying to do this. Also, it's a penalty-free thing. What's really bothering me a bit, though, is that we're giving away fuel, ancient tablets, and some nice building material. But, you know, in this game, you can't have it all. You just can't. So, where does this leave us? We still don't know where we are supposed to get our, uh, our beer making material from. So, we could go for either grain or roots. None of these is available to us right now, which is, if we wanted to go for that right now, sort of a gamble. I call it sort of a gamble because, as a matter of fact, it ain't really that hard to get uh, get a hand on these materials. All we need is just a uh, item or a building. So what's also really noticeable, we got a lot of clay deposits that we can also use. And these clay deposits actually do yield roots. So yeah, let's do this. We're going to draft the tavern here. This is a unusual pick at that point of the game, admittedly. But if you have the ability to bring these up, and that's the really important part, if the passive is just outright amazing, it's a really wonderful combination. It also is a building that makes humans happy, so we can put humans in there and uh, get an instantaneous happiness boost. But you got to respect it is a darn costly building, and it's also showing me what I have, uh, how to call it, it's costing fabric, and I don't have uh, a good fabric building yet. But tell you what we're also going to do, we're going to put up a second person into that workshop. So our herbalist's camp has no more stuff, things it can pick from. So this is another typical situation. We have lost the uh, access to the materials here, so we delete that uh, thing entirely. No need, no want, you know. So, we're going to delete all the uh, forest around here as well. And there's yet another plantation up ready for us. This is something that I really find useful at this point. Okay, how important is that building? Let's analyze. We can transform berry into wine, so we totally should rebuild that, as our berry production is stellar. You see, we got so much of that stuff lying around everywhere that it would be uh, ridiculous not to rebuild that thing, in my humble opinion. So there we go. We're also going to build farm fields. 
There's one thing, though, that we shall not uh, lose out of our sights. As long as we don't have access to process, uh, to complex food, the, the, the wine that we make out of the berries are berries that we cannot eat. That's very important to keep... Uh, to keep up our mind here. Okay. It's taken forever for these buildings to be finished, but it's okay. But our city is on a very, very good spot. I really do foresee bright times. So I finally made up my decision. We're going to go for the human villagers task. As I have just figured that we're uh, not going to gamble for the loyalty decisions here. There's just not enough of these uh, coming around. Or dumb me. This is a loyalty decision. All right. Loyalty and empathy mechanics are relatively new, so you see me fumbling around with that because I am still, at points, a scrub. That is uh, one wonderful thing about this game. It is really one of those games where you can learn a very, 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 very long time. All right. So we're collecting rainwater here now at the rain collector. It'll take a while until we have 50 portions of drizzle water taken in, but currently we can just unemploy these as we only need the water that falls during the drizzle season. All right, we got way too many workers for our own good. That's uh, what I personally really dislike when it happens, as this is a... It looks really good on the outside, but it's a highly volatile situation on the inside, as we are now pressured to constantly grow. We really need to constantly put growth on our uh, on our uh, on our city, because otherwise we'll die. That's why these plantations here come in so handy in my uh, in my taste. So we can make flour here, but we don't have anything that we can process into flour. Damn it. So, complete at least two empathy events again versus 30 farm fields and 25 packs of crops. So, I think we're in. I don't know if we can make berries. No, we can't bury up crops, but uh, whatever. I'll be putting down one of my dudes to crop up the vegetables that we pluck from that thing back there. We can make one person do that, but we already have the farm field uh, requirement uh, done, just like that. So currently, as you see, the uh, next storm looks like it's going to smack heavy. That's because it will. Luckily, our workshops are working hard, and we will have an opportunity to just... Let's see. Put up some humans in there. I guess we're only doing one. And we're also going to activate pottery now. Ugh. We're almost going to make 10 pieces of pottery here, as it's obvious that this is eating up very, very valuable resources from us. All right, next storm is incoming, and at this point, our our city settlement is at its uh, most vulnerable point in the entire game. We can easily get be get tossed into a crisis of sorts at this point, as we don't really have a uh, strategy to win yet. You know, we're uh, basically just. Uh, trying to progress along to get new things going, to get new reputation points. That is always where a point is, uh, where a game is uh, really vulnerable of sorts. Okay, so it's almost storm time, and it's really important that you check first before the storm hits if there are any effects in place that hit you if they are active. So, you know, there are certain... Uh, dangerous events that just are like if this threshold level is active while the storm starts you have to pay a penalty a fee whatever there's really a lot of baddies out there that uh, muck up your uh, city so 
we got here now for the first time the situation that we got more unhappiness than the city can stomach. It's not it's really not uh, untypical. The uh, storms at this point often look like this. But we already got a solution in sight. The uh, root workstation has produced enough fabric for the tavern to be completed. So we do have something that we can do. We also happen to have a uh, nice amount of uh, root production on the side, so we could get through that. So here I'm really playing it slow. The beavers will be the very first people to uh, lose their mind here. Again, nothing new for us. We're used to that. But we have a couple of fulfillable things. We just need to open another glade and we can fulfill the archaeology quest. We just need a bit of amber to fulfill that quest. We just need a bit of building materials. So let's see, what kind of building materials do we have access to? I'd say we're going to make that happen with bricks and the um, lumber. And we just need five packs of these. So that is another thing that we can do. All right, so currently the beavers are losing their mind while the lizards are keeping their chill for a very, very long time. Typical situation, nothing's, uh, nothing special about that. We need to put people into the, uh, into the brewery. So let's, ah, brewery, plantation, I mean. Let's get that dude here. And let's see. I think none of my humans are not working in a specialized industry right now. So, yeah. The only thing that helps is to cut down our workers on this facility and put it back to the plantation. They're going to fertilize the soil there, so that's going to help us a lot. And the second plantation here will again only produce berries, as we don't need that many uh, plant fibers here. All right monitoring this so this is very easy to handle we're just going to favor the beavers now so they're not going to lose it anymore and the time that it takes for the lizards to break to eventually leave is shorter than the time it'll take oh well never mind then the time it'll take for the um storm to end but uh, this is a solution as well so we can now satisfy the leisure need we will do so as it is a very potent way of giving us um, victory points so we gain scores for pickled goods produced this is in our current situation a real godsend as uh, at the brewery we can clearly produce pickled goods as well, so uh, let's see. Let's give that a limit of 50 and a higher priority. Let's do this like that. And let's pick up the... Yeah. It's five people either way, so we got the humans uh, here, there. And now we need to set up the rain collector. And we need to get our uh, workers back. I think like that should be good. I'm trying to get now as many humans into the tavern as possible, of course, as this will just help our people. And we can also fulfill the need for luxury. I did derp on that. Oh my god, we are so much on a uh, victory condition right now. So... So this game is perfect to illustrate how uh, service buildings can can have an, a massive impact, as I see. I like it. Let's put up enough housing for everybody. And we need to get ourselves... Yeah, we need to get that human back. That human has to work in the cellar. It's the same happiness bonus, but... Uh, So here, let's put up some limits on these items, so they don't get mindlessly produced. Alright. 
So the consumption of these service goods here will make our population very, very soon so darn happy that we shouldn't have much of a big time, uh, big, big trouble here getting ourselves uh, through all that. So I just figured that I want a passage up here. And we're going to continue all that in the next episode, I just noticed. So, the volatility of the situation lies currently in the low food income, because we're uh, not that much on a good uh, way. But due to the fact that we can now produce pickled goods, we... I think we are through the worst. Because pickled goods now throw off scores as well, and that is just, in this situation, such a powerful um, stat. Well, we'll see about that in the next episode. I thank you so, so much for watching. This is one really, really cool run so far, and I think we're on a good way of winning it. So, we're going to continue next time. I thank you for watching, and like I said, oh, I, <laughs> I forgot to enable the building material packs. Comments go down below. Thumbs up is appreciated, as is a subscription. Check out the description box. There's plenty of links to go around. Discord, Twitch, where I stream each Sunday evening. And of course, also my Patreon, PayPal, and Buy Me A Coffee accounts are found there. So check them out. If you'd be so kind to help out, I'd be very, very delighted. Up until then, thanks for watching yet again. Thanks for supporting the channel, and I hope you had a good time. See you all next time when we're trying our best to win this, although this game looks really, really dangerous. I see a lot of things. Looking forward to the next episode. Bye-bye.